you can check we are live 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 on uh, our socials the handle there is hope fm live hope fm live is how you can get us and today we've got a title of our sharing the devotion is called what the law was powerless to do and we can get this uh, from romans chapter 8 verses 1 to 4 and if you have the time by the way you can read the whole chapter I'm just focusing on those four particular verses from where we will draw uh, the devotion this evening all right i see jacob is live and i say my great uh jacob asante sana for uh finding your way to our socials to nashukuru sana you too can be there and also after this devotion has aired of course you can you know the thing with social media you can always share this at your own pace and also you can share it on your handles so that as many people can be reached with this message so once again what the law was powerless to do that's the title of our sharing from romans 8 1 to 4. let's begin therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do, because it was weakened by the flesh, eh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So can you imagine, can you picture uh, the wordings there? You can just picture the wordings there of uh, what the writer says that there is now no condemnation. I know most of us, sometimes we find ourselves in that place where we, we begin to say, uh, but this sin is too much. Can God really forgive me? You know, it's as if you've given over to the power of condemnation and guilt. But it is amazing what the writer starts by saying, hakuna tena, like if there was anything that condemned you, <laughs> you remember the woman who was caught in the act and these fellas brought her before Jesus to accuse her. And Jesus said, let him who has not done any sin be the first one to cast a stone. Because back then, if that was the, you know, the woman had been caught in that particular place, then there was the penalty of sin and they would be actually beaten or stoned to death. So we are seeing that the accusation of guilt, the accusation of, uh, you know, of sin has been muzzled. It has been overcome because now there is no condemnation. No longer can we be condemned if we are in Jesus Christ. And now I see that what this scripture teaches us is that Jesus Christ paid the ultimate price. His death and the resurrection on Calvary set us free from the dictates of the power of sin. We are no longer condemned. We are free just as long as we are under Jesus Christ's power and authority because what this uh, writer says here is that for what the law was powerless to do, you know, because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. What this also teaches is that if we are not under the lordship of Jesus Christ, it means then that the hold of sin over our lives will apply. And this is why you might see sometimes you find yourself doing those things of the flesh. When you do those things of the flesh, you subject yourself under that law. But if you live according to Jesus Christ, then that law will not apply. That condemnation will no longer apply. All right. And uh, sin also condemns. You know, we must understand that sin condemns us. It reminds us of what we did. But Christ sets us free. So let us live not according to the flesh, 
but according to the Spirit. That way we will have condemned, uh, we would have uh, come under justification because the just shall live by faith. It's not that we are too good or anything or anything that we could do to take away our sin. That would be now works of the flesh. And that way we will be um, coming to a point where we are making the crucifixion of Jesus to be of no effect. But if we were to be really, really, really uh, honest with ourselves, we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And therefore, we need the intervention of Christ who has been made um, into sinful man so that he would condemn the law. So that what the law was powerless to do, Jesus Christ, through his death, you know, has set, has, has set you and me free. And what a great place to just rejoice and know that our lives are no longer tied down to sin. Sin has been overcome and we can declare that sin has been condemned. The flesh no longer works, but it is Christ Jesus. His power, his power over us is what counts. And so it's amazing when it, the writer says that he became that sin offering to condemn sin, to condemn it in the flesh in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in you and in me. So Amelipa Deni, all we have to do is to receive the work of the cross. In Jesus' name, amen.